Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Peter here. Today's video is a very casual first impressions video of the company Oliver & Co. I have these samples that came a few hours ago. You can read them all there. Quite a few. And two of these, which is part of what, what he calls the Nebula series. So these are based on basically concepts of ideas of what these places in space would smell like. And these are more described as avant-garde, as, as he, he describes them. I've actually no idea about how any of these smell or what any of the notes are. So this is a true blind first impression. And I'm going to do it how I did it last time, whereby I'll completely blind smell it, having no clue what's in it. I'll try to give my, you know as much detail as I can that way, but then afterwards I'll go and look it up on Fagrantica and read you the notes and um, see then if my opinion changes based on knowing what's in there. I think that's an interesting way to do it. So yeah. So the first one is called Ambergreen. So, I mean going by the title we, we can guess it's probably an amber based fragrance but uh, and probably some green notes but we'll give it a go. Ambergreen. So this definitely does have um, an interesting greenness. From a first impression, it reminds me of galbanum, which has a kind of a dirty kind of uh, a dirty green. From a top note, I'm not really getting a whole lot of different notes. I'm just smelling a very strong, dark green. Uh, Maybe the amber comes out later, presumably in the dry down, but from the top notes it's all it's all earthy green and a little bit more minimalist to me. So I'm not a huge fan of green fragrances personally. Amber green. Oliver & Co. Amber green. So the notes are as follows. Basil. What the hell does that say? Amyl, amyl salicylate fig leaf. Galbanum, grass, shiso, green pepper, really? Green pepper? Amber, coriander, ambroxan, gayak wood, hedione. Hedione is a, a synthetic jasmine kind of like note. Oris, uh, and green mandarin. And the main notes, according to Fragrantica, are green pepper. Grass, Shiso, and Galbanum. Uh, okay, so these are interesting, <laughs> interesting notes. Let me just go back to it and see if it smells of green pepper. I kind of get what people are meaning, um, but I, I smell a lot of Galbanum personally. I, I no, actually, I, I see what people are meaning, but I, I think it's probably the way the coriander's mixing with the galbanum and the grass note, the green grass note to make it, um, yeah, I can see that, like a fresh cut green pepper. So that that's interesting. I, I'm personally not a fan of that kind of green smell. So the next one is vetiverus, vetiverus, vetiverus. So we can probably presume by the name that there might be vetiver in here. Uh, there's an ever so subtle spice that feels like there might be just a tiny dabble of citrus, but it's very faint. But it does have a, a cooling freshness. It feels like there would be some amber in here. There's a, an unusual sweetness, but I'm not sure if that's coming from some kind of a fruit or a citrus note. It has this underlining weird sweetness. There's an underlining subtle spice and the vetic, vetiver vibe. It's different. I'm not really sure how to describe that one. Uh, it, it is a bit more unusual. There's something unusual that I can't quite put my finger on with that. Uh, I'm not sure it's one that I would be keen to wear personally. Let's look it up. Vetiverus. Vetiverus. Really? Okay. So the, obviously the main note being voted is vetiver, but beyond that is clove. So that would be this, and coriander, so those are the spices. And I guess 
that's must be what's creating the cooling effect is the clove. Osmanthus and bitter orange. Yeah, it's the bitter orange that I can smell. You do get the Osmanthus. That would be the um, the apricotty kind of fruity sweetness that I was smelling in the background. Uh, the other note in here is leather and patchouli and musk. There is labdanum in here as well, and ambergris. So that's obviously giving it the amber kind of vibe. But it's you get a subtle spice and this cooling vibe, and I guess it's the it's obviously the cooling sensation that's coming from the clove. But you get a weird sweetness from the um, osmanthus and orange combining. The orange is a little bit sweet. Uh, that's different. I'm not sure uh, it really um, attracts me though, personally. Okay, so moving on to the next one is Ginsense. This smells like a spring kind of summertime fragrance. The first thought in my head was, oh, this is bright and sparkly. Now that I'm smelling it a little longer, there's something dirty in the, back, in, the, in the background. There's something just a little bit off. I can smell cashmerin, which is a synthetic that gives a sensual musky quality. There's also something bright and effervescent. There's also a subtle spice in this one. But the, the impression that it gives is this effervescent, bright, um, fizzy opening, a little bit like um, like you would imagine a gin and tonic kind of smell for summertime, but then it has this kind of undertone of something slightly off, which I believe is the cashmere in, um, giving it this kind of ever so slightly muted muskiness, so it's a musky kind of a fragrance but with this um, bright kind of effervescent, sparkly clean thing over the top of it. It reminds me of certain aspects of um, a drink called Canada Dry, Canada Dry Ginger Ale, which comes in a little green bottle made by Schweppes. It smells a little bit like that, so it makes me wonder if there's a hint of ginger in here. That one's my favorite one so far, I think, but I, I'm not sure. Maybe that's one that will grow on me, but we'll, we'll look it up. So looking this one up, it has notes of olibanum, ginger, bay leaf, sea notes, bergamot, violet, tahuja, musk, aldehyde, spices, ambergris, and labdanum. So yeah, that Obviously, the, the way the ginger's combining with all of that makes it smell a little bit like the ginger ale, the Canada Dry ginger ale. And I'm sure part of the musk accord is, is cashmere in. I mean, I might be wrong, it might not be, but that's the impression that it gave me. And I guess whatever is probably the aldehyde mixing with, it with the, the C note accord is making it smell like a tonic drink. I mean, it could be the bay leaf making it just a little bit dirty or off or something a little bit strange about it i'm honestly not sure there's just something that caught my um nose a little bit that was like oh i don't like this vibe in the background the best way i can describe it is the kind of a tonic water or a, a canada dry uh, which is a sparkly ginger based um mixer drink i'm sure most people know what that is so reading the official notes so you got aldehydes amber ambergris bay leaf bergamot galbanum I think it's the galbanum, maybe. That off note that I said in the background, I think is the galbanum. Um, and I, I don't like galbanum. Ginger CO2 extract, frankincense, fresh ginger, heba wood, labdanum, marine, marine notes, spices, violet leaves, and white musks. So interesting. Something intriguing, uh, intriguing about it. Um, I like the ginger aspect to that one. So the next one is is that, how do you say that, moose or moose? Moose? I think it's moose. It's got a double S. Um, not a clue what is in this one. This is very light. Like, very, it's not a strong fragrance. Okay, it's like a blanket of, of musk that smells like Isoe Super. Um, Isoe Super smells like, um, it smells different to different people, I notice. Some people describe it as like almost smelling like cedarwood, like really woody and quite strong. 
Some people are completely anosmic to it, where they just can't smell it at all, that's quite common. And I'm semi-anosmic to it, like it's not a strong note to me, I can barely detect it. And I can detect it better when it's in a blend, because it has an effect in a blend of making this kind of damp cloud over things. And, I, and it's the effect that I detect more than the scent. When it's on its own, it almost smells of nothing to me, especially when it's on skin, so that it would be pointless me owning Molecule 01 because I wouldn't smell it properly. But the scent that I do smell, smells um, a little bit like pale balsa wood. I don't get the cedar rough wood vibe that some people get. To me it smells like a musky, very pale wood. Okay, there's something, it's like burning my nose a little bit and it's sharp and a little bit spiced. Let me go back to which one had clothing. Um, There might be clove, because I mistook it. I, I, I didn't get the clove last time, but smelling this one, which has the clove, and then going back to this one, it has the same vibe. I think it's like a musky, it's, it's like the clove, instead of smelling spicy, it has the effect of just having this cooling, uh, fresh cool sensation that's slightly uh, piercing. Oh, it's kind of itching my nose. <laughs> Let me um, look that up. So aldehydes, Clove bud, okay, there is clove. I see super, actually lists it. Usually they don't list that. Lavender absolute, lime, mice, really? Mice or sandalwood? Oak moss and white musks. So it is a combination, it's not just I see super, it does have clean musks with it. But there you go. Um, so the next one is La Colonia. Pretty much smells like a shower gel. You've got kind of a bright citrus that's slightly muted almost like um, lime but there's musks enveloping it which kind of mutes it something ever so slightly green but the way it comes together smells like a, a so you can imagine it like um, a very invigorating shower gel something that you, you know would wake you up a little bit in the morning Reminds me of shower gel, that's, uh, I can't really say much more than that. I forgot to mention if my my thoughts on the on who would wear it, sorry. <laughs> this one leans masculine to me, even though it just smells like a shower gel, it smells like a man shower gel, so I, I'm not sure a woman would particularly want to wear that. I'll just go back and give you a feedback on the mousse, completely unisex, doesn't matter. Um, gin scents. I would say completely unisex, vetiverous, unisex, leaning, leaning feminine, just a little bit, but unisex, amber green. I don't like this, I get tons of galbanum. I, I do know what people say when they say green pepper, but I just get a ton of galbanum. And it's just dirty, I'm not a fan of galbanum, though. that's a personal preference, if you like galbanum you would love that. So that's just a personal taste thing. Um, I, and that's unisex, uh, but you have to appreciate the album. Okay, so we're going to look this thing up. What's it called? La Colonia. So here we go. The notes are um, sea notes, bergamot, watercress, green pepper, lily of the valley, cedar, jasmine, and sandalwood. I guess it's the um, I guess it's the sea notes mixing with the bergamot and the green kind of watercress and lily. The green vibes that ju just come together to smell like this rejuvenating, refreshing shower gel. And I don't mean that in a bad way, it smells good. It smells like a refreshing, clean fragrance. It still strikes me a little bit more on the masculine side, but s some women might, might like that. But it does remind me of a man's shower gel. So the next one is Van... Van Vanning Vanninger Van 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 Vanninger. Sorry about my pronunciation. I'm presuming these are Spanish words. I might be wrong. These are kind of stumping me for for descriptions. To be honest, <laughs> they're not the easiest fragrances to describe. These are a bit more unusual. In the same sense as imaginary authors can be a little bit. Unorthodox, unorthodox and a bit strange to describe in words 
this has that very similar kind of indie touch that's just a little bit wacky and different. So there's something sweet in the background and I don't know how to describe this at all. That, that one has me um, stumped. I'm gonna just look this one up because I've no idea how to describe it to you. Van. Okay, so the notes on this one are turmeric, benzoin, kumquat, lemon, amber, tolu balm, heliotrope, hedione, white musks, vanilla, and ginger. This is very strange. Now I know that there's ginger and vanilla in here, I, I can, I get that, but it comes together so, the whole combination of it smells very unusual to me. Um, very, very different. Turmeric and kumquat and heliotrope, tolu balm, hedione. This is very, very weird. I mean, I, I think it smells quite nice, it's just, very difficult to describe but you can't really there's no good way to to give you an impression of how this smells and for you to get an idea of it like there's just nothing i can say in words even reading that i don't think that gives you an opinion on how this is going to smell some fragrances you can give a really clear image in someone's head of how roughly it's going to smell and people can imagine it this one i've no clue how to describe it to give you to give you that this is something you just have to smell and experience. But it's pleasant, but it's very mellow and it's quite soft. This isn't a particularly strong fragrance. There's something, the way it combines, that smells a little bit rubbery to me. Not in a bad way though, but like almost like a doll's head. Do you know that kind of doll head plasticky rubbery smell? It has something along those lines going on with this subtle sweetness that smells pleasant it doesn't smell bad in any way. There is something about this that I quite like. It's completely unisex. Any, any kind of year, but it, it wouldn't work in the winter, it's too soft. But the whole mix combined together is very different and unusual and very hard to explain into words for you guys. Okay, so the next one is called Resina. Resina. So, let's give this a squirt. Man, this, this is like the last one where it just, I have just no idea how to explain this in words. Again, a very subtle sweetness. Again, almost like a rubber quality. And a subtle sweetness. And a subtle woodiness. That's about all I can give you. Um, let's look this thing up. So what is it called? Okay, so looking up the notes on this, we've got Tolu Balm, Star Anise, Myrrh, Apopanax, Benzoin, elm, labdanum, incense. This is like a resinous, incensey bum. I didn't smell any of that. Uh, rooibos tea. God, I get the tea vibe now. Yeah, there is a uh, like a rooibos tea. This is very light. It's not a heavy fragrance, considering the amount of heavy elements in here of very thick um, resins, and just doesn't come across that way. I do. I definitely get a rooibos tea. Now that I've read it, there is a, um, yeah, rooibos tea. The South Africans drink that offshore where I am because it's from a, a bush in South Africa that it's like a red, a red tea, a red bush. It tastes quite nice actually. I'm not a fan of coffee or tea. I don't drink it, but rooibos tea is all right. But you get vibes with that, but I don't get the heavy incense and resins that have been voted up here. There's also coffee, tonka, Christmas tree or flame tree, whatever that is, mace and jasmine sandback. So this is an explosion of, of all sorts. Honestly, I don't understand why this is so light. Those elements, this should be a loud fragrance. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. But to me, that's very light, very non-obvious that that's packed full of resins and incense to me. But now that I've read that there's rooibos tea in there, I get vibes of that. Maybe as that dries down, maybe the resins come out more. Maybe the rooibos tea is more of a top note. Who knows? Very bizarre, actually. Doesn't come across the way that it's voted on for Grantica, in my opinion. That's very, that's very mild. 
Okay, so the next one is Moose 2. So what did Moose 1 smell like? I forgot. Icery Super and Musk. Okay, so Moose 2. I prefer this to mus Moose 1. I think this is nicer. Again, Icery Super Musk. There's almost nothing there. It actually, one thing that concerns me is the is my anosmia to Isoe Super and certain musks. They're very soft to me. I can detect them, but they're not loud. So I don't want to blend with those materials because um, I'll overdose them. Or if I did, I'd have to work with them very subtly. To some people, this might smell quite strong. If you're anosmic to musks, certain musks and Isoe Super, you're not really gonna smell a whole lot here. And I'm on the tail end of that. This is not strong to me. This feels like it has more white musk to me than Isoe Super. The other one felt more Isoe Super than white musk. This one's got a clearer, clean white musk smell. Definite strong musk. Um, it's making me sneeze again. It has the same sharp, itchy quality that um, two. There's two or three of these that have clove to sneeze. I think there's clove in here again, and he's used it in three other fragrances. I get a. I get. A, a heap of musk and something sharp and itchy that I think might be clove again. This one you can't smell too close, it doesn't smell good up close. Okay, so we're gonna look this one up. Oliver and Co. Moose. Moose 2. So the notes are, hold on. Aldehyde, ambergris, cardamom, clove. Isoe Super, Lavender, Lily of the Valley, Lime, Mint, Mysore Sandalwood, Oak Moss, and White Musks. Uh, and the... Mm, hmm, really? Some of the main notes, according to your votes, are Clove, and Mint, and Cardamom. I didn't smell the mint, personally. Where, where is it? Kind of get what they mean. I'm not sure. I think it's hard to distinguish between the mint and the clove because both elements have that very cooling, refreshing tone. Even though clove is a spice, it has this coolingness, similar to frankincense, has a cooling vibe. And obviously mint does as well, so you've got two cooling elements there mixed with this dollop of musk. That, that one doesn't wow me, I've got to be honest. Okay, so the next one, okay, so these are the last two, these are the Nebula series. So the Nebula one is Orion, and the image for Orion is, is, is this. So it's got hues of reds, pinks, purples, and whites, and black. So let's see if this smells like a Nebula. Again, I, I'm stumped into how to describe it to you guys, and even the notes. It's very faint. I would guess musks and Isoe Super. There's a very subtle sweetness, a subtle woodiness. Almost something again that reminds me of rubber, like a very smooth, clean rubber. But it's quite light. But I'm not sure, for me it doesn't, when I smell it, I don't see the correlation between the pitch, just in my, the way that I um, see or smell colours, I, I, I don't get the, um, I mean it's very calm and still, so I guess you could look at that from a distance and just have this kind of sense of, of stillness and of just a little bit empty space, but I, I, I don't get the impression of the colours particularly, I don't get, you know, the impression of these dark reds and violets and purples and pinks and blacks, I, I don't really get that too much. Um, very difficult to describe that one. Let me um, look that one. Clicking on the wrong one. Nebula, Nebula one. Orange, blood orange, castorium synthetic, Davana, fiery notes, golden champaca, jasmine, lavender, neroli, orange blossom, pettigrain, pink fruit, red berries, red champaca, rose, saffron, cyan, benzoin, star anise, styrax, tolu balm, vanilla, violet, white white musks and woods. 
So the main notes voted by you guys are Castorium, Styrax, Blood Orange, Champaca, Cyan Benzoin, Red Berries, Tolu Balm. I'm surprised in a way that the list of notes in there and what they are doesn't come across. It smells like, um, the best way I can describe it, it, it doesn't smell lead, it doesn't smell balanced in a way that you have mid top and base notes and changes in structure. This smells like a singular organism. This smells like a, a soup or a singular accord of just here's a scent and you you can't really to me pick out too much of any of those. So I'm surprised really I guess people have to vote for something but the way it comes together doesn't smell you can't pick out, oh, I can smell champaca, I can smell blood orange or saffron or musk or orange or styrax. I, I really don't think you can. It smells like one thing that comes across quite light, quite flat, a little bit rubbery, but um, I guess it's the actually the, the smooth leather of the castorium and the way it combines with everything else, the florals and the resins and the musks, Instead of smelling leathery, smells like a little bit like very smooth rubber. To me, in, in my imagination, I mean, everyone's going to get something different. That that way, the way your brain works to connect image and smell is very, very personal and unique to everybody. So just because I don't smell that nebula, I think probably some people would. So the very last one is Nebula 2. And this one has hues of green and blue. And you know, it's green, blues, turquoises, pretty kind of colours. So let's see if this one smells more like the image to me. So this one has a freshness. It has definitely green notes going on. Definitely musky, muskiness. Ever so subtle speckle of spice. This one definitely relates more to the image, I feel, because there's an obvious kind of green note, and obviously that nebula is is full of greens, and so there is a definite color correlation there. But again, this this one doesn't feel. It feels very singular accord. Like I, I if most people smell this blind, I, I would I would imagine that most people can't pick out even three notes in here. They, they would just describe it as a singular entity, a singular s kind of sensation, rather than saying, oh, it has this, this, and this. It doesn't come across that way. You get a sense of something green. There's a muskiness about it. Maybe a speck of something spicy, but that's very subtle in, in the background. And that's it. Smelling a little bit longer. I feel like there's probably a, a touch of galbanum in here. And the citrus comes across more like lemon or lime. And there could be some very, very light kind of floral element, like a lily note. There is something zingy and refreshing about it a, a, a little bit, which I guess could be the stars sparkling. But in general, it, it doesn't wow me or, or, or take me into the middle of that image. Personally, it's quite fresh and clean, and it's just not the way that I would imagine that image to smell personally again art is subjective so okay so we're going to look up the notes for nebula ozonic notes metallic notes grapefruit yuzu melon lime gardenia latrus blackcurrant ambergris black elder jasmine galbanum i was right about the galbanum there's a, there's a hint of it it's not a strong note cardamom clary sage, white musks, and chamomile. So you do get a hint of a floraliness. I mean, I'm looking at it from a niche head. I'm looking at it from someone that smells a lot of fragrances, that's used to, you know, a lot of niche perfume, an indie perfume. When you smell this, I don't think it's gonna grab many people, being perfectly honest, but I can't imagine many people going, wow, this is amazing, I want to own this or particularly being excited to wear something like that because it doesn't particularly smell like perfume to me. It smells like a, a thing rather than a perfume. 
So if I was going to recommend any from this line, it would be the Vetiverus, Ginsense, and Ranaga. So I recommend testing them yourself if anything sounded interesting. But these three are the only ones I'm going to do a review on because I'm not going to bother reviewing something that doesn't speak to me personally. I don't, I don't think that's particularly fair. These three I think are okay. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry that there's not one that really excites me to get excited about. Uh, I get people complaining that, oh, you never like anything or please review something that you actually like. And, you know, uh, <laughs> I try to do those as well. Uh, but you've got to bear in mind that I smell thousands of fragrances. Uh, not everything is going to excite me. So these ones aren't my personal taste. They might be your personal taste. So although I'm not taken with them personally, other people might really love them. Bear that in mind. You know, don't take um, a reviewer's word as the holy grail. Don't put too much credence on any reviewer. It doesn't matter which reviewer how much you 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 think of their nose or whatever it's just a personal opinion of how something smells and if someone likes it or not that's incredibly personal and inc incredibly subjective so take my word of a pinch of salt and really if you are interested in trying some just test it out yourself don't rely on, on me so to speak all i can do is say my thoughts but don't take that to the bank you know you you might have a very different one i have seen positive reviews of some of these so obviously some people really love these and connect with them, they're just not working for me personally. So bear that in mind, it is a personal opinion, you know, just because they're not my cup of tea doesn't mean they won't be your cup of tea, so bear that in mind. Hope you enjoyed the video anyway, and I'll see you again next time with another one. Bye bye.